I think for many people, they get into pediatric research for personal reasons as well as scientific ones. My first love is taking care of kids in the emergency department. It is often a fast-paced place to work. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. I'm also a pediatric intensive care doctor at Children's Nebraska. I'm a pediatric emergency medicine physician at Children's Wisconsin. I'm also the division head for pediatric emergency medicine at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm an assistant professor of pediatrics here at Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago and Stanley Manny Children's Research Institute. I'm a pediatric cardiologist at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I'm also the Chief Emerging Technologies Officer. As a part of the Pediatric Emergency Care Research Network, or PCARN, we're one of 20 institutions that are enrolling prospective studies that are taking emergency care to the next level. I'm a pediatric oncologist, so I split my time between a lab that I run, and I also do work inside the hospital taking care of children. What drew me into pediatric research was the innovation potential and the ability to accelerate different aspects of medicine through research. I think the discovery process is something that attracted me since I was uh, in grade school. My favorite cartoon characters were Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? The science guy. When Dexter's lab came out, I couldn't get enough. It was all about his lab, it was all about what he was doing. So I am so privileged to be able to function both as a scientist and a physician, physician-scientist, and to do what I love at the bedside and at the bench. As a physician scientist, being able to also think more about ways that we can improve care, not only for the person in front of me, but also for other kids across the country has really inspired me to not only take care of kids in the emergency department, but also do the important research that will make a difference. Being a physician scientist actually helps me in both settings. I think there is something unique about children's hospitals compared to adult hospitals and pediatric research specifically, which is we know there are fewer pediatric researchers, period. The research isn't just for pediatrics. The biggest project of ours is our virtual reality surgical simulation suite creating a 3D digital twin of the patient's anatomy. View that and interact with that in a virtual reality environment and then be able to have surgeons really anywhere in the world connect into it, but essentially an online gaming network for surgeons, which we call the surgical metaverse. One of the things that I really love about doing research here, they were really smart about the idea of investing in a lot of shared resources. Often it takes millions of dollars to do clinical trials, and the federal funding for me has really made a difference in doing these large-scale studies. Microscopes and sequencing machines and resources that otherwise we couldn't do our work with and couldn't do to the same level, but that came from institutional funds and institutional funding. As a young physician at the bedside, I was caring for a very high number of pediatric brain tumor patients. The physician in me was intrigued, and the scientist in me asked why. I take questions from my everyday care kids in the emergency department back to doing the clinical research that will hopefully change how we deliver care back in the emergency department again. One of the treatments we still use today for rhabdomyosarcoma is called D, like the letter D, 9803. That 98 indicates the fact that the treatment was developed in 1998. Unfortunately, we are still using therapies that are 30 years old. It's not good enough. We have to. We have to make breakthroughs faster now more than ever to help children who've been battling this for decades. There's a lot that goes into and in how you think about physician scientists. I think also the pipeline for physician scientists is one that you could say is pretty endangered in a lot of ways. By the current numbers, we know that MD-PhDs are declining as a portion of the larger medical community. What may not be looked at initially from the larger for-profit industry is the fact that everything that we're developing and building, like Formula One, like NASA, is going to trickle down and improve and be profitable for adult care. Kids are an incredibly important part of our society as a whole. They're our future, but they're a very small part of the NIH or federal funding. If federal funding is cut for pediatric research, we will absolutely lose the pipeline. The surgical metaverse that started off with our initial NIH funding through our Accelerated Innovations Grant. There will of course be downstream consequences if funding is cut because labs will have to reduce their size. Oftentimes there's federally funded research that starts pushing us to think more innovatively, right? Go into any children's hospital, it's going to be far and away more innovative than you would see in an average adult hospital. So technology, by Moore's Law, 
not me, the more famous more. It allows us to be able to expand and exponentially grow. We as physician scientists are watching for those innovations. I'm just so excited about the collaboration that I'm seeing in research. There is so much integration across specialties. There's collaborations across institutions. That is what drives me. I want to be able to walk into a room and see their faces that have accepted a potential inevitability and say, you don't have to accept that. We actually have a way of helping. This is why funding is so critically important today, is because there's still this zest for science. There's still this hunger to solve the problems of today for the children of tomorrow.